Welcome to Lyme Time. I'm Allie from the Tick Chicks. We are all more than Lyme disease and chronic illness, and together we stand with you to overcome and rise. I'll bring you closer to the experts in cutting edge treatments and even a few unexpected ways of healing. I'll ask the questions you want answers to regarding Lyme disease and successful ways of getting you closer to 100%. We are in this together and will not be defined by Lyme. Today on Lyme Time, my guest is Kelly Howe, and I'm very excited to have her here and talking about EFT. Kelly is the host of the Manifestation Lab podcast, as well as a registered nurse turned transformational coach and EFT expert. With a lifelong passion for mind-body healing, she now combines her knowledge of the human body with cutting-edge mind-shifting techniques and modern psychology to help entrepreneurs and soul-driven leaders ignite untapped potential. Specializing in a technique known as EFT, or emotional freedom technique. She works with clients one-on-one, in groups, and inside her Align membership. Her work is designed to get to the root cause of stress and overwhelm, shift damaging limiting beliefs, and unleash confidence, courage, and intuitive peak performance. Welcome, Kelly. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure being here with you. I'm glad we were able to do this. I am too. And for everybody who doesn't know, Kelly and I met in person about a month ago at the Losing Lime Retreat, and she so graciously stepped in and was one of our wonderful speakers. And uh, I don't know. I mean, Kelly and I, I feel like we could talk for hours and hours, and we just have so much in common. (laughs) So I just wanted to just basically start with your own personal journey and your and how you got to where you are now and if you ever sort of dealt with any chronic illness or chronic conditions in your past that led you here today yeah so there's a couple of places I could start you know my EFT journey and we'll get into talking about what EFT is really started when I was working as a nurse you know in my quote unquote, former life, I was um, working as a nurse on the floor, I worked in labor and delivery for eight years, and GI nursing for a couple of years after that. And I was completely burned out. And I just really got to a place where I was not feeling like myself, I was highly emotional, I was lashing out on people, I was shaky, I was nauseous all the time, I didn't have much of an appetite, I was losing weight without trying. And, you know, in hindsight, of course, I know that this was all built on stress. And at the time I was one of those personalities. Nurses are very classically these kind of people that are like, sure, I'll take that. I can do that. No problem. I'll take that off your plate. No problem. I'm not going to complain about it. I'm just going to do it for everybody. And I'm going to put a smile on my face. And the truth was like, mentally, I was okay with that. That felt fine. But my body was screaming at me and telling me that I was stressed out and that I was not fine. And I always joke with people, right? Where it's like, they're when they say I'm fine, I'm like in air quotes, you know, I'm like, "Uh (laughs) uh-huh, you know, let's, let's go deeper, you know, because our body tells a truth that sometimes our mind isn't in connection with. And so when I was working as a nurse, I was extremely burned out. I was, you know, I'd had three babies very close together, um, two family members diagnosed with terminal illness, very close together, family member who committed suicide. My dad lost his job and moved in with us. And I was in my twenties and my husband and I were just like, ah, you know, it was just like a time when, when stress really compressed all at once. And I found this technique called EFT or emotional freedom technique. You'll hear people call it tapping, meridian tapping, TFT tapping. There's different versions of it. Um, but it is a technique that uses ancient Chinese medicine and where we put needles in the body for acupuncture. We actually just tap on those points rather than put needles into it. And it sends a very calming signal through the nervous system. And it really starts to talk to your, your mind and body on a very foundational level. So we're not just thinking, I want to be calm. We're not just breathing, it, it really communicates with our nervous system and allows our body to actually relax so that if we're stressed, we can actually start to think our way through it. So I was burned out. I found this technique. And to be honest with you, I thought it was completely crazy when I found it as a nurse. I really had, I would say kind of that Western medicine ego thing that a lot of us nurses and doctors and other professionals go through where it's like you went through school and you feel like, okay, now I know what it's like to take care of my health. And the truth is I didn't learn shit in nursing school. You know, I really, I learned the tip of the tip of the iceberg and, um, that, 
ego Western medicine mind was keeping me blocked from going deeper and trying to find out like what was really going on with me. So when I found tapping, I really thought this looks insane, but I went ahead and tried it anyway. And I literally felt my body shift and go from shaky and tense. It just felt like like something had rushed out of me, had melted out of me. And I didn't understand it at the time, but what I was feeling was my nervous system actually relaxing and coming out of fight or flight. And so because I felt it work so quickly, I was hooked. And I mean, I felt a shift literally within a matter of like seconds, maybe even minutes. I'm somebody who's very body-based and very, um, I feel things very intensely. And so if I can communicate with my body through touch, I usually get a really rapid shift. So I found tapping and I was just hooked. I had to learn everything about it. And, um, it kind of went from there. It's incredible. I, I had heard about it and I'm no stranger to, you know, sort of metaphysical stuff and, you know, using the mind body connection and all of that. I've been doing it since my early twenties. Uh, but tapping, no, I just hadn't crossed that bridge really. And then I saw a movie called Unwell. I don't know if you ever saw that. Yeah, I did. And it, it was um, it was great. Um, and and it kind of went into maybe it was the Heal documentary. I think I, that's the one actually. Went as soon as you said that, I went to Heal in my mind, yes. and that was the one it's, I was thinking. It about. was mm-hmm. Heal, and I saw the Heal uh, production. And that is when it really, you really go into it with, and you see it in, in practice. And it was just like, wow. And the, the power to unlock so much inside your body. And, you know, we're talking today about people out there that are literal prisoners of their own body and, you know, chronic Lyme disease is happening. It's, it's basically becomes chronic and, over 60% of the people out there. And so if you're not one of the lucky ones that could just take an antibiotic and get, get past the actual bacterial infection, we're stuck, stuck in a chronic condition. So people are literally listening to this from bed, feeling very much in despair. And I just, I love that we're going to talk about this because it is something you can do in the privacy of your own home. It's not expensive. And it's, and it works. And so, so let's talk first about uh, how you learned, uh, where, where did you first see? Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was a really kind of serendipitous moment where I had had, I truly had like a breakdown, mental breakdown, like surrender moment where I was crying in bed and like, I'm not myself. I don't feel like myself. I, I can still remember it perfectly. My husband was asleep next to me and it was dark in the room and I was just bawling. And you know, I had this moment where I was like, please, like, there's got to be something. I haven't always been this way. There has to be a way to undo this. And while I'm somebody who's not like against medicine by any means, um, I'm also someone who really naturally likes to try to figure out like, what's actually going on here? Like, why do I feel anxious? Why is my body shaking? Like, why do I feel so unwell? What happened to me? And I wanted to undo what had been done. And so I had this surrender moment and I was like, you know, God universe, if there's something out there, I wasn't even sure I believed in anything at that time, you know, um, please bring me something that will help me figure this out. And it was, it was like, like a few mini little steps where I signed up for a newsletter kind of out of the blue and then started getting emails about this tapping thing. And I was getting emails from the tapping solution, which for anybody listening to, they, they have such great resources. I mean, a wealth of free content, um, the tapping solution app, there's a free version of it. There's a book, there's a documentary, which I would recommend to absolutely anyone because it walks, I think like 10 people with completely different issues. Some of them with chronic illness, some of them that had been through major loss, car accidents, things like that. Um, but people really suffering with all levels of, physical, mental, emotional distress, and even things like PTSD. And you, you watch them go through this process of healing with tapping is just phenomenal. Um, But I started getting these tapping solution emails and they had an opt-in for a free video. And I just was like, okay. And they started talking about this tapping thing. And this is when I was like, this is absolutely crazy. I truly thought that somebody was like, playing a joke on me and that I was being recorded through my computer. Like I just thought it was wild. Uh, but like I said, I felt it work. And so my first, I would say probably two years of tapping was all like 
pre-recorded videos, tapping scripts that I would get through the tapping solution or other people that I would find online, YouTube videos, um, reading different books. I mean, I just started devouring as much content as I could. There was um, an EFT podcast at the time. I'm not sure if that one still exists, but so as you mentioned before, it's something that everybody can learn. You don't have to spend money on it. Um, the caveat I would say with that is that when we're be when we're dealing with issues, especially something like a chronic illness, where it's a lot of times we feel so alone, right? And we feel like we're in this struggle, and it's like we're really in a deep dark place with it. Um, it really helps to have someone hold space for you, mm -hmm. and to hold love and support and compassion and just to listen. And so because that's such a huge part of the healing journey, I would say, yes, like try this out on your own. However, if you don't feel like you're getting results from it, it might not mean that the technique specifically isn't working. It just might need that, mean that you need a little bit of guidance and you need the right person to hold space for you and to listen and to be that support system. So yeah, I, I started learning about it through any resource I could find that was free or very inexpensive. Um, and from there, I started getting trained. I was driving up to Chicago from where I am and went through a training with EFT Universe, also has a ton of great free resources for anybody that's interested. Um, and the when I started learning about tapping, you know, going back to like being introduced to other me metaphysical type things and spiritual practices, I was already a little bit interested in that, but I wasn't, I wasn't deeply immersed in it at that point. But I do like to say that tapping is sort of like the gateway metaphysical technique because it is grounded in science and the science and research is just exploding right now, showing that it is incredibly powerful. I mean, it shows that we can shift up to 72 genes, maybe even more in a matter of an hour. Um, you know, we reduce cortisol by between 25 to 40% in an hour of tapping. There's all kinds of real, like, hardcore evidence showing that this is not just a, a feel-good technique. This is truly changing us at a physical, you know, biochemical level, like things are changing really, really quickly. And so for me, I think because I was a nurse and I was open to metaphysical things. And, you know, of course, now I truly believe that even things that seem wild and out there just haven't been proven by science yet. Just, we don't have the tools and the means to, to prove that that's real yet. But, but there is a part of me that's very skeptical and very grounded in like what's real and tangible. And the more I dug in, the more I found that like there are, you know, licensed practitioners, psychologists, therapists all over the world using this. And um, sure, you can explain it in a woo-woo way, which I'm totally like game for. I talk about moving energy through the body. I think we are doing that, but we also are doing things like downregulating our nervous system. We're shifting cortisol. We're changing our brain waves, and we can see all that on these scans. So when I started going to Chicago and going through my courses, it was like, it, it was the perfect combination of um, hardcore, like real, this is physical. I can feel my physical body changing and mental, mental, emotional, and spiritual work. It really brings all of our senses together. And it's a really comprehensive, integrative healing technique. Whereas I think a lot of different techniques sort of focus on one, one area, maybe shifting your thoughts, or maybe something is all body-based and you're getting a massage. You're not necessarily thinking about anything. This brings, you know, Western psychology and ancient mysticism and, you know, current science together into one really powerful technique. And, um, it works in so many different ways. The saying in, in our community is to try it on everything because so many of our ailments, maybe even all of them can go back to some level of stress. And it is a stress relief technique. It is an emotional release and a physical release. And um, where wherever we can reduce stress and going back to chronic illness, of course, there's so much stress that goes along with that of just the journey of dealing with a chronic illness. And I know we're, we're speaking to the Lyme warriors out there. Um, I don't have that same exact experience, but I have been dealing with a really challenging hypothyroid situation for the last 20 years. And um, I have a, a lot of the same chronic illness type things. It's when I can't get out of bed, trying medications that make me feel worse, talking to doctors, them not believing me, um, you know, telling them that a medication is making me feel worse and them saying, that's okay. Just keep taking it, take more, <laughs> you know, like so right. many things, uh, so many things that were, <laughs> were really, really challenging and, you know, seeking answers and not finding answers and spending a bazillion dollars on a million different things and, and just not feeling better. So I can relate to so much of that. Um, and to be honest with you, after being at 
the retreat, I am really curious about if I do have a Lyme infection and just have never, you know, never realized it, never been um, treated for it. So yeah, it's just, it's, it's, it's a really fabulous tool for anybody who's dealing with a chronic illness. So for those of, of us that are new to it, um, you know, it is exactly like she describes it. It's tapping. It's literally putting your fingers in certain points on your body and starting a tapping process. And can you talk to us, sort of take us into what a tapping experience would look like and also let us know what's happening to our bodies when we are actually creating a tapping on our body yeah, definitely so so as i mentioned in acupuncture we use needles and the needles are specific to they're there to really channel energy into those those points on the body and there's been stu studies done um for the last 10 years, there was a study done at Harvard that showed that if you put a needle into an acupoint, of course, these points we've known about for thousands of years in ancient Chinese medicine, um, but on these specific points, if you put a needle into that point, they actually can see on fMRI in the brain that our emotional centers will start to dial down and start to shift the fear center, that amyg amygdala that is in the deep down in the center of the brain, which has a lot to do with regulating emotion and specifically fear. It's sort of a fear detection center. That amygdala will be completely lit up for somebody. And then they will put a needle in these points and it will dial down and, um, go offline and which is actually what we want if we're trying to come out of a fight or flight state or some sort of dysregulated nervous system state so we don't use needles in tapping but we do use the same points and we actually use the pressure of our fingertips as you mentioned through tapping and when we press two things together it actually creates a really gentle what we call piezoelectric signal that travels through our nervous system and we know that it's traveling through our nervous system because we can feel it right our, our sensory nerves pick that sensation up it travels through our our nervous system communicates with our brain and then it travels back to our fingers if we want you know to move it and feel it so um it's just a really really gentle way of communicating with different parts of our body and these acupoints that i'm talking about are all over the body we use eight or nine of them in the the basic tapping protocol and we do we just gently tap and we start to talk about what it is that is distressing us at this time. There is there is a process called the basic recipe, which really is just looking at, okay, what is it that's distressing me right now? And I usually recommend people just start really broad and say like, I, you know, I feel stressed or I feel sad. And so we start by tapping on the side of the hand and we just say something like, even though I feel sad or even though I feel stressed, I deeply and completely accept myself anyway. And it's really just a basic combination of acknowledging how we actually feel and following it up with some sort of acceptance or affirmation. And as basic as that seems, a lot of times when people start tapping on the side of the hand and saying that, which this is the first point that we usually tap on, um, just acknowledging how we feel and and moving into a space of acceptance or loving ourself. It's, you know, it's so powerful, just those two pieces of it, saying those two things. But when you add the tapping with it, it starts to move the emotional energy through us. And it starts to also regulate the brain waves and dial down the nervous system. So we get this like really deep reset and emotional purge, like all at the same time. So as we move through the top tapping process, we start to tap on different points of the body. So after we would tap on the side of the hand and say something like, even though I have this stress, I accept myself anyway, which by the way, if anybody's listening, they're like, this already sounds insane. I hear you. It's fine. <laughs> Just hang with me. I promise this works. Um, but after that, we go up to the top of the head and right in the center of the head, there's an acupoint. There's several meridians that cross through there. Um, and we would just say something like this stress or, um, you know, this sadness, you just continue to acknowledge how you feel, but put it into a shorter statement. And then you move through the points kind of around the face and there's different points that we'll tap on. And interestingly, each of the points that we tap on aligns with what we call a meridian. And in ancient Chinese medicine, these are like energetic highways. Very, very cool stuff. Just in the last couple of years, there's been studies that have found that there is actually a very, very tiny, um, capillary, even smaller than a capillary system called the primovascular system. And I've been talking to Peter Stapleton recently, a couple of times for my podcast, who she is one of the leading researchers in the world on EFT. And I keep wanting to say capillary because she's Australian. So <laughs> I've talked to her enough times about this that it's like, I have to like stop myself and say it in my American way. But, um, 
yeah, the tiny, tiny, little itty bitty microscopic um, capillaries called the primovascular system, which align with the meridian system. So I don't know how these ancient people knew that that was there, um, but there is a physical system that goes with that, that, you know, sends, you know, the way I understand it is that it takes physical um, sensations and turns it into electrical si signals and takes electrical si signals and turns them into biochemistry. So that's how we start to shift our nervous system and start to feel different. So it's really, really amazing stuff. It, it really is. And it's right at our fingertips, as they say. Yes, it is. It's, it's incredible. And I, I think that this is a great time to mention why it's important to work with somebody and have, especially in the beginning, have like work one-on-one -on -one with you or somebody who is qualified to take you through the process. When you came and did it with our seminar, I don't know, we had a 30, 45 minute session. I can tell you firsthand, I came out of it feeling so relaxed. It was a very basic thing because we wanted to be, you know, appeal to everybody and not, not go too deep or anything like that. And she just, it was an introductory EFT session, but I, I opened my eyes afterwards and I just, I, like you, I felt completely relaxed from the head on down to my toes, but it wasn't just a physical relaxation because all I was doing was lying there. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a mental break from the crazy wheel that goes on in my head all the time. And it was actually, I could actually say, I reduced my fight or flight, you know, in, I knew for certain that I had taken myself to a whole different level, both mentally and physically. So in that 45 minutes, what I'm trying to say to people with chronic illness is, you know, your mind is half of this battle and what you're telling yourself is half the battle. And Talking and becoming, and of course, in the beginning, you are obsessed with your health. You're obsessed with why am I not able to walk and, and why can't I function? I mean, it is, it is a trauma that takes us to our knees. So I guess what I'm saying is this is an experience that can give you a break from that and turn your body literally and your mind into a different direction and have your mind follow this new thought process and your body will follow. You are absolutely right. I'm so glad you mentioned that because so much of the mental work that we do is all about just changing our thoughts and thinking differently and trying to put our focus on the positive. And that is so important. I'm not saying that's not an important skill, but what people don't realize is that many of our thoughts, people even believe that all of our thoughts are actually deriving from a physical experience deeper in our body. And so when we start to try to think positively and see things positively without doing body work, it feels really hard a lot of times, or we can get our mind to shift, but it doesn't last very long because our body activates again and is still in fight or flight. And what people are just starting to learn about through the somatic work that is really, you know, and tapping as part of that things like EMDR. And, um, there's, there's really a lot of them emerging is that we realize that when we can shift out of fight or flight, our mental shift happens naturally. We're not forcing it. It's just all of a sudden the world seems like a safer place and the colors are more vibrant and suddenly we have hope, but it's not because we're trying to have hope and we're like forcing it. It's just, it naturally blooms through us because our body truly feels safe and at home. And so our mind balances and, and it goes together. And so it's not one or the other, you know, it all works together. But for me, I think, I think because I do respond so quickly and profoundly to body-based work, I was meeting a lot of frustration with trying to feel better but I was really only doing mental work and mm -hmm. my body wasn't feeling better. And I think there's actually a real danger in this that I'd like to talk about. And that is that if we get really used to being positive, like up here, just in our head, but we're not acknowledging that it's not shifting our body, we begin to actually create a separation 
or we make that separation even farther apart between what our body is telling us, that intuitive information, that truth teller that our body is, and what our mind is saying. And we can get into a place where our mind says, no, I'm fine. Everything's fine. I feel fine. The, you know, the world is positive, you know, and all the things, but our body is screaming at us. I lived that life. So I know what that is like. I was, it's a, it's a skill set. It's a survival skill set that many of us learn very, very young because we're in situations that we can't get out of. And in order to get through it, we learn how to just like push things down and move on. And, and I think, you know, I work with a lot of old souls and I think that is something that we've learned in a lot of lifetimes. <laughs> and it's like, you know, I know how to be resilient. I can look forward. I can be positive. However, there is this communication happening between the mind and the body. And if we're not careful, we can actually make that farther and farther apart. I've actually even seen this with, um, and I love meditation, so don't get me wrong, but I've actually seen this with people that aren't doing the physical work, but they, they're they really, really, um, really good meditators and they, they do it often. And it's almost like addictive for them because they can, I think a lot of times they're dissociating. So they're going to this really peaceful place, but the second they come out of meditation, they're right back in fight or flight. Mm -hmm. um, and it just, there can be a split that happens. So it's not one or the other. It's how can I be positive and acknowledge that there's pain and discomfort in my body. And when you use tapping with that discomfort and you acknowledge the emotions behind that discomfort, the fear, the sadness, the frustration, the anger, and the biggest thing I would tell people is the rage. If you mm. are a human on this planet, you have anger and rage inside of you, even the sweetest person on the planet, because we're human and we have all this full spe spectrum emotions and we are meant to. And so a lot of times the people that I've worked with, if they're very shut down and they don't have a lot of energy, it's because they were in really difficult situations growing up. They weren't allowed to be angry. It was better for them to be quiet and to be small. And so as they get older, they've learned to do that so long ago that the, the impulse and the frustration and the anger is sort of rising up inside of them, creating tension in their body or like a sick feeling in their stomach or a tightness in their chest. And the mind is just ticking along going, yep, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. So tapping, not only do you get the nervous system relaxation, but you also move through these like really old emotions and speak it through your voice. And it's just this like really magical way of processing so many things at once. So can you tell me a little bit about if people are thinking, I don't know if I can do this or, or a, is there a type of person that it works better on or what would a person really need to be prepared for when they come see you? In other words, what does their mindset need to be? Yeah, it's, I really, I mean, the person that I love to work with is someone who has already been doing their their deep investigation and they've, they've come to the place to recognize that, yes, I'm dealing with this chronic illness, um, or whatever challenge is showing up in their life. You know, I, I focus on business owners, but to be honest with you, I sort of put that out to the universe where it's like, I'm ready for anybody who's ready for the transformation. And that usually looks like somebody who's like been reading a lot of self-help books. They've already been trying to like uncover and unearth and understand how their, um, mental, and psychological and spiritual beliefs and experiences are also influencing their health. And so, you know, I tend to attract people that have like tried a lot of different things and not to say that this is the end all be all, but it is a lot of times like a next step to integrating all of this. Um, there, what I would say is that tapping works on most people. I can only think of like one or two people that ever sat in my office where I just didn't get anything from them. Um, what I really believe is that they were highly dissociated from their body because of a lot of childhood trauma. And that's not what I'm designed to work with. I don't have the degrees and, you know, it's just outside of my, my scope of practice. So I couldn't go into that. I shouldn't go into that, but the people that have had the hardest time with it really have, um, complex PTSD and have been dissociated for a very long time. And so I wouldn't be, <clears throat> excuse me, the person to work with them, um, uh, because I'm not a therapist. So really I would say it, what people would be, would need to be interested in is, um, what else has happened to me that might be kind of playing out inside of my body that yes, has to do with Lyme, but also maybe has to deal with what happened in my past, because we haven't even really talked about that yet, but tapping is a really useful day-to-day -day stress relief 
tool and it can be used as that, but I call it kind of like over the counter tapping, super powerful. It will shift your nervous system. It will help you feel better. But I believe the real magic happens when we go back and use tapping on specific memories and old events that have happened in our life, because those traumatic events, even if now we look back at it and it's like, oh yeah, that's in the past. Like I've moved past that. If there's any sort of physical response, when we think about something that happened from the past, it is still in there. And even if you don't feel it, it's probably still in there because our nervous system is really designed. Our mind, body, spirit is designed to survive in a human world. And so through the years, you know, think back even just a few hundred years ago, it really served us to be in fight or flight a little bit more often than we are now. We were on high alert for animals that might attack us and uh, a lot of dangers that don't necessarily exist to us now. And so our nervous system is meant to both react to that, but also remember so that when we encounter that thing in the future, we remember on a very, very deeply subconscious level on a body based level so that we don't have to like think about it. We can just jump into action. Mm -hmm. So what happens now is that um, we sort of accumulate stress throughout our lifetime. And when you go back and start tapping on specific memories from our past and really processing through old traumas, you release stuck energy, you shift your nervous system out of a baseline stress level that you've probably been in for a very long time. And so you can do less tapping day to day because you've reset on such a baseline level. Your nervous system learned something a long time ago. And I I know I use this example at the retreat, um, but I like to give people the example of a car accident because it's usually really easy to kind of recognize, you know, somebody can feel completely safe driving in a car. They don't have any anxiety getting into a car. And then all of a sudden they, they have an accident. And then the next time they go to get in their car, their heart starts racing. They start sweating. Their palms start sweating. They're shaking. They're crying. Maybe not even crying, but like they're having this really big physical reaction because our body, our subconscious is saying like, hey, that thing isn't safe anymore, you know? And so what I tell people is when you use tapping to process through something like that, an accident or something that was really, really just emotionally wounding over the years, you can get to a place where you can get back into a car your body doesn't react to it. You just feel safe again. Mm -hmm. It's like when I've processed somebody through, when they have processed through a trauma, they can tell me about what happened and where it used to trigger a physical reaction or even like mental spinning to an eight, nine or a 10. They can tell me about it with zero reaction or maybe like a one or a two, but it's, that's when the trauma is truly processed and in the past. And we're not designed to just let shit go. Like people want to, right. That, let it go. Just let it go. That was another thing I was finding myself super frustrated with. People would be like, oh, you need to just let that go. And I'm like, yeah, I've been trying that for like 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> and somehow I'm still like my body, like my mind would let it go. Yeah. Right. I've for- mentally forgiven that person, but my physical body still felt rage. So we need a way to deal with that. Absolutely. And yeah, this is, you know, this is, what you're saying is not toxic positivity. You know, we're not just telling people to be happy or get over it or, you know, put mind over matter. It's an actual physical, you have to actually physically transform the the way that your thoughts are controlling your body and move through that and move past it. I think that this would be so helpful in the beginning of an acute state of Lyme disease, but I also think it's probably almost imperative that a person does this before actually having the complete healing experience. You can hang on to, you can, your the bacteria in your body can have run its course, but people hold on to the trauma of it all for years and years and years. And you can't just get rid of it, get over it, right? (laughs) Get over it. You can't. And this is, this, I think would really help so many people that are out there that have, that are sort of like, I am, um, I've been dealing with chronic Lyme for 20 years or 15 years. Um, and we all, you know, I definitely give credit to those people. And I understand that there's a lot going on physiologically. However, I think that this is just such an important tool to use and consistency is the name of the game and i'm sure you know like you said you can learn a basic tapping experience kind of like breath work Mm -hmm. and be able to use it in your day-to-day life and kind of move past getting your heart rate down and all of that stuff but if you really go into tapping on a on a one-to-one 
basis with somebody like Kelly, you're actually committing and you're telling yourself, I'm going to go deep and I'm going to move through some of the feelings that I've had and traumas. And my trauma response is really what it is. It's not yes. dredging up traumas again. It's basically learning how to move through them in a helpful adult way. You might not have been able to do that years ago. Okay. So I, I, I just think it's a, it's an incredible experience and everybody needs to do it at some point of their healing journey. Um, you talk a lot about intuition and manifestation. Can you talk a little bit about how those two uh, play into a chronic illness condition? Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, being on a chronic illness journey myself, I can say that one of the biggest things that I have benefited from just from doing healing work, you know, through the years, trying to heal my throat chakra in a lot of different ways is that as we release the trauma, we get rid of the interference that is blocking us from our intuition. And every step along the way where I've healed a memory, where I've truly forgiven somebody, when I've, you know, allowed myself to have my real feelings and release all of this, you know, stuck emotion that's just been like really stuffed inside my physical body, I'm releasing interference and I just naturally connect with my intuition. And I see people do this all the time. So from that point on your healing journey, you start to be able to make decisions for your healing journey from a higher perspective, not from a survival perspective, because you've shifted out of that state. So you can actually connect with your higher self, with your higher consciousness, with God, with your spirit guides, whatever you believe in, there is a higher intelligence out there, you know, whether you believe in it or not. And that's one of the biggest things that people tell me right away is that it's like after a session, there is this level of clarity that comes through that you couldn't access before. And it's incredibly frustrating for that interference to be in the way and to have our body screaming at us and to have our mind be so busy. Um, and I'm not saying you can't connect with your intuition when you have that interference. It just is a whole lot easier as you start to lay down those traumas and truly process through them. It's like there's less to wade through. And so as far as manifestation goes, you know, it all goes together. But um, I like to look at manifestation as both a very physical, real experience. It's just bringing into the real world what you want to see and experiencing what you want to see in the real world. And then I can also look at it from a really deeply metaphysical, energetic perspective where it's like, um, yes, as we, as we release our traumas and we release those low vibration, you know, dense stuck energies, we just naturally lift and rise. And so even without even trying, it's like the right people show up in our life. We hear the right podcast. It's like, it's like the things that we need to heal just kind of start coming to us because we start to let the blocks go. And then again, on a really physical level, when we, when we have calmed our body, and even if it's just for 30 seconds or a minute, and we have that clarity in that state, in that physical state, we are upregulating our well-being our genes are shifting into a state where they want to rest and repair. And so manifestation gets easier from that point when our body is, is manifesting health and well-being, and we feel better, we're more likely to make decisions that are more aligned with where we want to go. And so it's like, it's easy to see how we could bring into the physical world what we want to see, because we're thinking more clearly. <laughs> mm. And and we're clear about where we want to go. And we're not in that survival, just like fighting for our life, you know, kind of state. I would think that would be really helpful when going in to meet with a new doctor or, you know, um, having a special event that you absolutely have to go to no matter what just being able to have that clearing experience before going in there and you're just crystal clear. And yeah. that's, that, you know, we have a lot of brain fog in the Lyme disease uh, community. So I, I really love that part of it. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about what specific things your clients have worked through um, specific issues um, that might help some people out there? Yeah. Well, through the years, um, I have, I mean, I've worked with so many different types of issues. When we look at physical issues, I've helped people heal chronic pain in ways that would just completely blow your mind. Um, 
knee pain. I had a woman come to me that had been dealing with pelvic pain for probably 10 or 12 years. She'd been to many, many doctors. Um, she'd had surgeries and had had no relief. I mean, she was just at her wits end. And so what I will say before I go deeper into that story is that there is some level of emotional content to all physical discomfort and pain. So that is the starting point. How do I feel about my disease? How do I feel about how I feel, right? A lot of times it's like, well, I'm sad. I'm hopeless. Those That is what where we have to start. We have to clear away and, and allow and release and just honor how we really feel right now before we go deeper. Um, and with her, that's where we started was, well, I feel hopeless. I feel like nothing's going to, you know, nothing's going to get through this. I'm afraid I'm never going to get through this. There's a lot of fear. And as we started working through just how I feel right now, one of the things that we start to do a huge and important part of the investigative process with tapping, working with somebody who knows what they're doing is starting to look at the roots to how we feel now and when we felt like that before. And so what we start asking is, okay, you feel hopeless and sad and scared. When have you felt like this before? Tune into your body. Where does that fear activate? Where do you feel the sadness? Where do you feel the fear? And people will say, oh, I feel my stomach. I feel sick to my stomach or my heart, you know, my chest feels tight. Um, or like oh, suddenly people are like, yeah, my, my legs are tense, which is usually a sign that it's like fight or flight. Like I want to run away. Um, but we start to ask, you know, where, when have you felt this before? And when we, when we allow these emotions to flow through and we start tuning into the body, a lot of times old memories will start to come forward. And even if we're not even tuning into the body, just the process of tapping and calming down that amygdala in the brain, the amygdala sits right next to the hippocampus. And that, that is the center where we'll get memories coming forward. So as the amygdala starts to dial down, the hippocampus will start bringing forward memories that are related to what we're working on. And so we'll say, when have you felt like this before? And people will start getting these memories and they'll be like, this is so weird. Suddenly my mom just flashed in my head, or this is so weird, but I'm seeing my second grade teacher. You know, those, I hear those things all the time. Um, and sure enough for her, she was like, that's crazy. I've never told anybody about this, but she had an assault um, many, mm -hmm. many years before that she had never told anyone about. And the process of having a baby re-triggered what had happened of course wow. in that area and and I see that kind of thing a lot with physical discomfort and physical pain and that is why I, I want to go back to you ask like what type of person would you you know would step into my office and usually the people that I that I work with are on the point where they have moved through they're like okay this is this is really, really hard, but they are, are also starting to recognize that this is part of their like spiritual journey too. And there's so much learning and growth that is happening. That post-traumatic growth is happening through this really horrible thing that you're dealing with. Um, and usually by the time people are ready for that, they come into my office and we can really like dig in and go deep. Um, yeah. So this woman, I, I had two sessions with her. It only took one. It was the first. What? Session. Yeah. Oh my god! I think I think she signed up for six sessions, and I only saw her twice. And I and and her husband messaged me and was like, "Oh my god, thank you!" Like they got they got their life back. Um, I will say that doesn't happen all the time. That was one of those cases where even I was like, what? So "Like close your mind." It does happen though. I've I've had people with knee pain and hip pain, and you know, it's what happens is we have these traumatic experiences. We didn't have the skills to truly process it. We probably didn't have caregivers or people around us that knew how to support us. And so it just gets frozen, right? Like the actual trauma gets frozen, but then the emotions get frozen because we don't have anywhere to put them. And then what happens is we go through life. And just like with this example, um, something similar happens. And so dealing with a chronic disease, I would say probably a hundred percent of the people dealing with chronic disease, it is re-triggering old trauma. It is. And it might not be the cause, so to speak, but investigating that old trauma will give you healing gold every single time, whether it gets you completely out of your situation or not. There is some emotional content to every ailment, every single one. And so doing that emotional release work along with the body is just like incredibly powerful. I can't even tell you. And then of course I work with business owners all the time and we work on things like mind, body, money, um, connections where people are like, God, I've been at the same, the same place for five years. And no matter what I do, it's like, every time I think I'm going to break through, I either sabotage or something happens and I lose a bunch of money. And, um, that's all programming too, that comes from 
scarcity when we were younger. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I personally believe that we carry these kinds of things in our DNA on a physical level. And so when we, you know, come into a body, we sort of inherit everything that's ever happened to our ancestors. And so it's, it's really, really deep work that we do. And not everybody does work as deep as I do, but I mean, I really, tr I believe that people that come into my office are ready for really profound, deep, physical, emotional, and spiritual healing. And it's, it's, it's interesting how quickly, like you described somebody saying, oh, my legs are hurting or, uh, you know, my stomach. It's amazing how, when you actually do this work, how quickly you can tune into a specific part of your body that may not have even been on your mind and you're tapping into that and you're just like, oh my gosh. Yeah. It's, it's incredible. That's all I have to say is that's yeah. incredible. And it, your body does not lie and it does tell you the truth. And that's sometimes you just have to get quiet and you have to have somebody like Kelly guiding you through it to the place where you can actually hear what it's trying to say to you. Yeah. Definitely. And again, going back to, you know, trauma that comes from before, if people dealt with a lot of isolation, feeling alone, I think I already mentioned this, but it is so important that it's like, if that was your, your core wound, then you need to work with somebody. You really do because you can re-traumatize yourself. If you activate something and a, an old trauma does come up again, we're not like, we're not creating that. We're not recreating it. It is drawing up what is, what is stuck inside. And so you can re-trigger yourself and you can re-traumatize yourself if you try to do it on your own. So it is, like I said, I tapped for a couple of years, at least two years on my own. I did a lot of deep work on my own. Um, but I don't recommend that to everybody, <laughs> you know, that's not, sure. that's not for everyone. It's yeah. Yeah. And, and, and then, to be able to, if, once you're tapping into something like that, you have to know what to do with it. Once you, once you've accessed it so that you can't, you are actually truly healing it and not just dredging it up. Right. Exactly. And which is why talking about it, you know, you release a little bit, you feel a little bit better after you talk about something, but it's not, it's not actually processing it at that physical level. And so a lot of times people tell the same story over and over again. And they always say, it's like, I just dredged it up and then it just got tucked back down. But the thing that I hear over and over again, doing tapping work is that, yeah, I've told that story a million times, but this is the first time I actually feel, feel different. Like mm. it, and people normally say like it was here and now it's over there. It's like an, it is an energetic feeling. Like I'm not carrying it anymore. I'm not carrying the weight of this anymore. Now it's over there. Really oh, fascinating. Gosh. And if That's anybody incredible. needs like one more, you know, I don't even think we've touched on um, the benefits to the immune system when you use tapping, but really it's, it's like not the magic of tapping as much as it's taking your body out of that fight or flight state or out of a freeze state allows that immune system to come back online. And it takes a lot of energy to be stressed. And so when we can dial our stress level down, even just one or two degrees, you know, go from a five to a four or a three, um, we recall that energy so that it can actually put those resources towards rest, digest, healing towards fighting a bacteria. I know I talked about this in the talk and that it's like when we're in fight or flight, the blood actually drains away from our gut and our body doesn't care about fighting a bacteria. It doesn't care because mm -hmm. it thinks that we're, we need to fight a physical battle. And so if we're chronically stuck in that state and it's very easy to see why and how that happens as somebody dealing with a chronic illness, um, not only because you're re-triggering old traumas, but because of everything that you're dealing with and um, it's so easy to see how someone would get stuck in that state or again, freeze. It's a body going into a state that is not prepared to rest and digest and rebuild. So tapping, um, in studies has been shown to increase immune markers and I don't have those statistics like stuffed in my brain, unfortunately, but yeah, really fascinating. It's, it's also, I should point out to, um, I'm, I'm a pretty driven and positive person in general. So when all of this started happening to my body and it was basically stuck and I couldn't move and I was going from doctor to doctor, I did have a doctor tell me at one point, he's like, what, what do you have going on in your life? And I was like, oh my gosh, it's, it's incredible. I'm building a house. I'm like <laughs> president of the PTA. I'm doing all this stuff. And it's just like a really good time. I have three kids and it's just a really great time. I'm so excited. And he, he just sort of made, he was the first person to say, you, you know, 
your body doesn't know the difference between good stress and bad stress. So I want everybody to hear that because you don't need to actually be going through a tra traumatic, what we all would can all the big things that we would consider a traumatic time. You could actually be going through some really wonderful times. And it's even that's wonderful. You're building a house and it, you're excited and everything. It's the day-to-day -day decisions, struggles, the sleepless nights, the um, the things that go wrong, all of the stuff, managing three kids on the side, trying to you know, speak in front of people and do the whole PTA thing. I'm just using these as general um, things. It, it, that in and of itself wears your immune system down and your body just doesn't know the difference. Your, your heart rate goes up, your shallow breathing. And so I, I would think EFT would, ha would help with anything. And of course, I also have things that I can talk about that happened in the past. But as adults, we think, oh, I've got this handled. I'm doing just fine, which just seems like that's where you kind of started on your journey as well. Yes. I'm Things so are not always as fine as we think. Exactly. Um, and so every, little, that. every little bit chips down on your system. So any bit that we can do to help it out is incredible. So I want to talk a little bit. I want you to be able to talk a little bit about your Align membership and your Align program and anything else that you offer to everybody on your website. It is uh, Kelly Howe, H O W E dot com. Uh, co is it that co yeah Not yeah co. okay it's so funny because like the younger people are, like get the co but like even my generation they're like is it missing the m is that, <laughs> is that a typo? <laughs> i just wanted to be sure i just yeah, wanted somebody to be had sure. the kellyhow.com which is very annoying but um yeah. you can actually go to kellyhowcoaching.com also it'll take you to the same place so yeah i have the manifestation lab podcast and um you know, again, like I'm a, I'm a deep spiritual gal. So I like to, I like to go deep into subjects with people. And we really talk about all facets of like what it takes to shift into a state where you can manifest a life that I say, like sets your life, you know, your heart and your soul on fire. That's just really what lights me up. And that doesn't stop with uh, mental or spiritual. I very much love talking about physical stuff and physical healing and, um, I actually, I have some, some guests that I'm going to get lined up where we're going to talk more about immune system health and people can find my line program. So I, I have to say right now, I had a situation happen right before the Lyme retreat, actually, where I realized that the system that I'm using, my contact management system, I also build my courses um, and do my membership through this system, had a very big glitch in it that was making the content like almost impossible for people to access on their side. Mm -hmm. Um very, very frustrating <laughs> considering that like I built everything inside of this system and it was a big enough glitch and issue that I'm actually going to be switching systems. So the Align program is actually going to be paused like as of, I actually have my last Zoom here in about 30 minutes um, for a couple months while I rebuild in a different platform. But the Align program is really for anyone who wants to do that deep journey of aligning with their higher self and getting rid of the interference. So yes, I work with a lot of entrepreneurs, coaches, healers, um, people that are driven to take their business to the next level. But I have to be honest, the, the content is really for everyone because mm -hmm. we talk about things like connecting with our intuition, setting boundaries, um, releasing worry. And I don't know a single person on the planet that doesn't need all of the topics that we've worked Correct. through this, this month we're working on, um, saying the hard thing and using tapping to regulate the nervous system around having a difficult conversation. Like who doesn't need that? <laughs> you know, like, of course. I, I don't know. I don't know of a single person. And, you know, that goes back to, you know, I, I like to work with people that are ready for that kind of transformation and, you know, a little bit woo woo, but grounded in science and ready to like dig deep and figure out what is going on. Like I'm here for that. And that's what the aligned membership is too. And, um, so whether that's business or health, I really, I really feel like it, it can be for anyone. Um, yeah, I do too. And I feel like manifestation, why could, you know, we should all be manifesting perfect health, Yeah, perfect cellular health. And it Absolutely. starts, it really just starts with believing that it can actually happen. Absolutely. So I think that you would be a good bridge from getting to where we are now to actually putting all of this in, in, in process. Yeah. And going from believing that you can to having it. 
Absolutely. Yeah. And our beliefs are so deeply wired to our traumas. So just kind of continuing to bring it back to that. And that is definitely connected to the trauma of dealing with Lyme for however many years for these people, right? The longer it goes on, the, the more deeply ingrained that belief can become that like, I'm stuck with this forever. And when we have a deeply held belief, we see the world through that filter, unfortunately. And so it's, you know, that's not woo woo. That's real. That's, that's real neuroscience. It's like, we see the world through that lens um, and it gets harder and harder to break out of it. So yeah. And looking Absolutely. at our belief systems is just so important. Well, thank you so much for your time. I mean, this has just been a wealth of information. I am sure people will be pausing it, rewinding, writing down and, awesome. and taking notes and, and seeking you out in, in their own journeys to being able to complete their healing journey and complete it to total and perfect health. Um, so thank you so much. Uh, yeah, thank I you for having we, me. That we run across each other again. I'm sure we will work together again. And, and just thank you for your time, Kelly. Yes. Thank you for having me. It's, it is truly a sacred journey to walk with anybody who's in that deep investigative healing process. And I don't take that lightly. And thank you for having me on to let me talk about what I love to do. Of course.